Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've actually been asked about this running line system for Zeus the Golden Eagle for you know, quite some time by different people. Um, would you recommend it? My default setting is I could never recommend this because it has inherent problems, um, many of which could cause injury or harm to your bird if not used correctly or really just if not thought around uh, in response to your particular individual bird. So I'll, I'll sort of talk you through how it works briefly and I'll talk you through the problems that can actually occur. So you can see Zeus is there. He goes away in his muse at night, but uh, many eagle falconers of old here against this wall, and I do keep thinking about this, would have well, <laughs> a sentry box style setup where at night or in inclement weather, or even for shade, if needs be, this is his shady corner. He's got a sentry box that the line goes into, the perches as it is, You've just got that shelter. Now, if you don't do it particularly large, the bird will always try and get on the roof, if you like, the, the front lip of that lean-to, which can be made, if you do it correctly, into a perching area with a bit of astroturf and a perch along the top there. The bird can fly up and land on that sentry box. So one system for golden eagles. In fact, a lot of people in the olden days, and I'm sure they still do, would have a perch like this with a sentry box. Forget the running line, but you've got your eagle out and he can come out onto a block in front and sunbathe. But we're talking specifically about this running line setup. So if we look down here, my favorite, my favorite perching for Muse is a half bow perch that's bolted to the wall and concreted into the ground. Now the way that works is obviously where it's bolted into the wall, you cannot have the line or the ring or anything getting snagged where it bolts to the wall. So let me see if I can flip the camera around and just show you that really briefly. Hold on. So have a look down there. Bolted on AstroTurf right floor. This is a bit of aluminium scaffold that Emily's dad put over a hole in the ground on a building site and put a digger bucket through it just to bend that into that shape. So a bit of scaffold bar, perfect setup. And then it's been drilled through to take the cable. So the cable's not tied around here anywhere. The cable runs inside and is attached uh, with the cable clamps to the other end. So nice, smooth, everything needs to be smooth. But one, one thing here, of course, look, here's the running ring. This is a plastic coated steel cable from Amazon. Uh, obviously you need a reasonably decent ring. Tethered onto there as you would normally. Now this bird can go under here, walk under the ground under here, and he's going to get tangled around here. It's happened once. Remember, this is a falconry centre. We're here all day long. Maybe different if you're not at, not at home and your bird's at home. So obviously, a bit of hardboard, plastic, rigid plastic sheeting, anything can be clipped along there. If nothing else, a crossbar, just to stop your bird wrapping around this leg. And then this ring, as you can imagine, runs along the running line and he goes all the way down there to a completely different size type, type, type of perch. Um, good for the bird's feet, always have different perches. Now, look at this line. Can you see this? I don't know if you can see. You would think that line wants to be really tight like that. And then when it's tight, this ring will zip along easily. That's not what we're after. We don't want this bird to get up to high speed. Hey, yeah. I'll come back to this in just a second. Sorry about that. Felt a bit daft filming it in front of the public. <laughs> so you would think a taut running line, zip wire, and the ring is gonna fly up and down. We don't want that. Look at the slack on this. And it's golden eagle. Firstly, it can easily pull that ring along, dragging on that grass. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you why, why uh, not to use this setup and the things that can go wrong for sure. So half bow perch here, proper astro turf. Ideally block off the half bow so you can't get tangled into there. And then we've got this steel, plastic coated steel cable that runs down here. You can be quiet. And obviously for a bar, we can move around so it doesn't kill the grass entirely. And then Nice bit of wood, works better with a bark on, but obviously it doesn't last forever. This is post created into the ground, so it's absolutely rock solid. There's a sort of size of it. And a little chainsaw, a little carving chainsaw poked all the way through. If you've got an auger bit or a big drill bit, 
uh, you can battle away and get that through there. Low down, don't want it high up, low down near the ground, remember? And then this is made off here with a big ring, as I, I think it was what I had, a big ring, literally bolted on, it's a ring on a bolt, just to give it an anchor point. And then you've got these cable clips that enable you to put the tension and fix the cable together and back through there. So they can't fit through there. So you've got double, sort of double security and a ring bolted on down there. Down low, nothing can get around there. So another tangle point, of course, if the bird's sitting on here, he can land on the floor and he can get around here, but he can't get all the way around. So he's not gonna get tangled. He's just gonna get cheesed off and then realize he's gotta go back this way. Not a problem. Okay, so simple design. You could have up there a nice shelter. Half bow perch coming off the wall, anti-tangle. Possibility of tangle here, but not particularly. And then you've got this loose, this loose cable. So more people come in. I feel a plonker. So I'll resume this in a few minutes. I'm back. Now obvious problem with this video is I haven't bothered to hood <laughs> Wurzel, who is saying, Dad, I want to fly because I want my tea. Background noise. So, obvious problems. Number one, massive, massive problem is a yearling bird, first year bird, first season bird, it often isn't as bomb proof as it's going to get. And whether it's a Harris's hawk, an eagle, golden eagle, especially seemingly Benelli's eagles, they have not fully calcified their legs. Their muscles and legs haven't, aren't where they could be uh, as they get fitter and older. And these birds, like any bird of pride, I guess, it, it can break its leg if things aren't correct for it. So don't ever use a running line system for a bird that's that's not that's in its first year. I think you just you're just gonna increase chances of something going wrong. But number number one problem: birds flying from down there. It's flying all the way from down there up here. It gets spooked. So it doesn't want to stop, it wants to get away. So it thinks, I'm going to clear that wall, clear those trees. It's now going as fast as it can. Remember, we've got a lot of drag on this line because it's, it's really slack, but it's going up some speed. The longer the line, the faster it can go, the more power it can get up. It tries to clear the wall. Well, two things are going to happen. It's going to come to an abrupt halt because its jesses are going to stop there. It's, the running line, the ring's going to stop there. And then it's not going to clear the wall because the leash isn't long enough, is it? It's going to fly hit the wall chest first. I usually break, hit the wall chest first. Is your bird going to do that? Equally down that way, there's not even a wall in place. There's a hedge. Is it going to try and clear the hedge? It's going to come to a sudden stop. It's not going to hit anything apart from the ground, but its legs are going to come to a sudden stop. Look at this. There's a vulture. So we negate a lot of that problem of sudden stoppages because this is so slack. Look how high this is off the ground. Because it's so slack. So it gives you a cushioning effect. Quiet down. A cushioning effect where it can pull away here. The line, the ring isn't suddenly stopping there with no give whatsoever and stopping those jesses uh, suddenly and obviously if the jesse stops suddenly so does the bird's ankles and so on and so forth so what's going to happen when your bird flies to one end of the line or the other and decides to keep on flying think about that having a backstop really does work especially because you've got all that up there the bird usually doesn't think it's going to clear that but it's all possibilities possibility bird trying to fly up there snapping suddenly stopping down there and equally that end. So having this line really slack gives a lot of give. So it sort of pulls a little bit, I guess a little bit, not a bungee, because it doesn't really pull back suddenly, but it just have an awful lot of give on it. And of course, the ring dragging, it's a steel ring as well, dragging in that longer grass on that really slack line, it slows the travel. So why do we use a running line for Zeus? What's he, what's he getting out of being on this running line? Well, obviously he can fly up and down, I don't know how far that is. I guess I should pace it out. 30 or 40 yards, maybe. 
he could fly up and down. He can choose. So, like, he can sit today. He's in the shade. It's a little bit of sun now, away from the public. Or he can go down there and have a bath and sit down there in the sun. He can sit in the rain and so on. It gives him a bit more freedom of choice. Does he care? No. No. If he was sitting on there all day and that was just a half bow perch, he would be just as happy as he is now. These birds don't care about flying. But of course, you leave a golden eagle sitting around for the summer months and it gets flabby and it gets unfit and it gets fat. And for sure, more than any other bird, it takes a long time to get the weight off of these guys and build their fitness and muscle back up. Honestly, it's all going on. The fact he flies up and down several times a day, he's hardly going up and down all the time, it's really kept him much fitter when it's time to take him up in the autumn and start doing his fitness training. So noticeably fitter now, he's not super fit, he's not whizzing up and down, just moving those wings and flying a bit has made a massive difference compared to him sitting around doing nothing at all. Um, he loves to be on a high swing perch. You can't use a swing perch in a Fulcrum Centre, but when he was at home, high swing perch, looking across all the neighbours' gardens, he loved that. Fulcrum Centre, when a bird, an eagle will bait off a swing perch, sometimes they'll choose to hang upside down. They'll choose and they get back up any time they like. And that is not good for public perception because the public don't understand birds of prey, do they? So this method works fantastically for him. It has massive inherent problems. Of course, like any tethering, you've got to make sure you've got incredibly sound equipment because if that part's weighs off of this cable, a ring, a leash, Jess's bird, that bird's going to get tangled up. So you've got to check your kit. Kit's got to be perfect all the time. But you've really got to think about what happens if your bird overflies. What would be ideal for your bird? Shelter here. The same half ring design here. And then maybe just six foot of cable to the log, the, the post here. And the bird can go in the shade, in the dry, come out of sunbathe, have a bath. It's moving about a little bit, a bit more choice when it's tethered. With no speed at all. Oh, one more thing. Don't ever hood your bird on this running line. Watching him fly, and I never, I never ever hood birds and leave them untethered or anywhere. Dumbly, for some reason, I hooded him on the post down there. Moved away, he flew. Like when a bird flies hooded, it doesn't know what it's doing, is it? It flew. The line took him this way, and he flew headfirst into that wall. Could have broke his neck, couldn't it? So you've really got to overthink things more than you do anyway as a falconer. So, brilliant setup. Brilliant idea, massive, massive problems of hurting or killing your bird, unless you understand your individual bird. There's no, you can't ask me any questions and me say, yes, that bird will be all right, unless you know your individual bird and you really, really work out how this line works. You try and mitigate all the problems. So for instance, if that perch was just a, a perch with masses of open space behind there, it's way more likely to keep flying flat out, isn't it? have a backstop of some kind for sure definitely um, and make sure there's plenty of drag on that ring so I hope that answers a couple of guys that sort of asked me about this setup it is a brilliant idea wrought with possible dangers never put a first year bird on a, on a design like this ever that is number one thing I think hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe it massively helps Everybody's looking at me like a lemon again. So I'm gonna get off today. Loads to do. Comment below if you've got any sort of videos you wanna mention on, and they'll be on the list and I'll gradually get round to them. Thanks a lot. Please like and subscribe. I don't wanna beg, but it does help. Yeah.